I wanted to talk a little bit about working on our little knitted animal friends <clears throat> from Louise uh, Crowweather. I know several of you people are following me that are also making these. And uh, I've had a couple of reach outs about uh, some procedures and that I've switched over to. And so I think I'm gonna spend a little bit of time going over some of those with you. I actually was gonna make the dog be my next project, but I'm actually doing the horse <clears throat> instead. Um, I've got my book open here to the horse page. And as you know, most of what is done in the book is knitted flat with seams to sew up. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Uh, I just don't particularly care to have to sew all the seams. So I anything that I can adapt to do in the round, I do. If you don't like doing it that way, we have freedom. Don't do it that way. Figure out what works best for you. Um, but I've got my little horse done up uh, to the point that I've actually uh, attached one arm. I wanted to show you what it looked like for uh, knitting in the legs and the arms are going to be knitted in the same way. I think it's really slick, don't have a seam to worry about, uh, and I think they finish off nicely. They're tucked in there real well. So all of this was done in the round. I decided to make my horse have little dark feet. Um, the body, I started out knitting in the round. <clears throat> came up uh, just, oh, I don't know, what do I have here? Maybe about an inch and a half opening uh, that I've left open to get stuffing in there. And of course, there will be an opening at the back of the head because the head is done with intarsia. And uh, so you have to knit a row and then purl back. You can't knit completely in the round very easily uh, with intarsia. It could be done, but you're carrying a lot of yarn over that uh, you don't really need to do. So there will be an opening in the back of the head, but I did leave myself a little opening here, so this will have to be sewed up. But I wanted to show you a little bit about my process with <clears throat> knitting the hands. I have done, and arms, I have done a number of them where um, I've not put in the thumb bump, but I but I think the thumb bump kind of gives it a little bit of shape that's nice. So I decided to knit from the top down like the pattern calls for. Uh, someone suggested to me, which I don't know why I didn't think of it, to do provisional cast on. And uh, so I've done it here in the uh, little uh, lavender tone yarn. And uh, this will be actually uh, pulled off, taken off. The live stitches are there. And then I can knit them right in to the body. And I just wanted to show you what that looked like. So on this particular one, I have the underarm knitted on. In this row, when I came around, I just knitted the this uh, upper, or well, actually the lower part of the arm, the, half of the stitches that were in the lower part, knitted it right into the body when I came around and I used this little tool right here. My friend, this little crochet hook that has this wonderful point at the end. A crochet hook will work, but there are times that this little pointy end is really valuable. So I use this to knit through, or crochet, <laughs> pull my yarn through, whatever you want to call it, on these stitches here because it's a little bit bulky. So that that's the hardest part is getting your, this part of the uh, arm laid up against the body. I know I'm coming in five stitches from where this the seam is here. So this is the back of my uh, work and I counted over five stitches and then the next seven stitches I knitted together and you can see that right here with the back. And now when I come back around, I will do that with this top row. This is what the provisional cast on gives us is 
I can get to live stitches right here. So I didn't, um, you know, you, I don't know of any other way to do it that would be smooth than doing the provisional cast on. And some may not know what that is. You can look it up on YouTube, <clears throat> but it actually is quite simple. And I'll just do a real quick little, you do a slip knot, get my slip knot here, and um, get my slip knot on my, call this my crochet hook. And I'm gonna lay the crochet hook up right alongside of my knitting needle just side by side. And I've got my yarn here to the back. So now I'm going to take my little knitting needle, pick up a yarn over, and pull it through my first crochet. That's my first, and bring my yarn to the back. So here's my first knitting, my first stitch. That's my first live stitch. Do that again, slowly. I have them laying side by side, the needle and the crochet hook. My thread, my yarn is under my knitting needle. Take my crochet hook, come over, grab a loop, and pull it through. And you don't want to snug these up real tight. You just, uh, there's no need and it'll make life easier if you don't. So I put my yarn again to the back, put it underneath my knitting needle. Come over here and do another crochet. And I'm gonna do that for however many stitches I need on my needle. In this case, I think it tells us to cast on 14 stitches for the arm. So I'm gonna do that 14 times and then uh, and, and actually this goes real fast. I'm trying to just so do it slow so you can see what is happening here. So let's just pretend that we have 14 stitches. <clears throat> so then you're sitting like this with the loop over your crochet hook. And we want to crochet a, sh a chain. That's gonna do two things for us. It's gonna tell us which end we're gonna unravel because you can't unravel from your starting end with the crochet. You have to do it from up here. So if I do a little chain, that's going to anchor my stitches, but it's also going to show me which, where I need to start the unraveling when I get all of this done. And I did not bring my stitches into the camera, but I would just cut this off and pull it through and then that's gonna be secure while we're knitting. And that's what I have here, knitting the arm. So the arm, this arm is knitted on, ready to be knitted actually onto the body. But this is what it looks like with the cast on. I would say do a cast on that's easy to see in contrast to what you're working with. And also you want it to be kind of a slick yarn. You don't want something super fuzzy because uh, when you undo things, you know how sometimes the little fibers can kind of catch one another. Um, <clears throat> and there is a little bit of a texture to this yarn, a little fuzziness. So don't, don't do something any, um, this has a little fuzz to it too, but it, it unraveled okay. So if I'm ready to do this, you just, you know, get a hold of your yarn right here if I'm ready to unravel. And I'll be actually knitting it in here in a little bit. But I'm just gonna pull that out to show you. Now I'm ready to unravel this. When I get down to here, <clears throat> I wanna be ready with my knitting needle to pick up these stitches. And then I'll be ready to go right over here and knit them into the body. So I just wanted to give you a quick what I do and like I say, at this point in time, the only seam I'm going to have in, in the body is this little piece right here. And actually, I could have left that opening down here further anywhere. Um, I have done it where I only stuff from the opening that's in the head. 
and it's possible to do that, but it's um, just a little bit harder to get a good, uh, you know, stuffing down into the lower part of the body. I've done it, but I just think it's easier to leave a little bit of a seam opening there. So now I'm actually, <clears throat> to tell you where my shoulders are, I'm, I'm at row uh, 69 of the plain body pattern and, and that's where I'm putting my uh, knitting my arms into was at row 69 and then I'm going to once the second one is on and I'll be coming back to uh, finish off this video I'm going to knit just a couple more rows and then I'm going to go to knitting the head I do not do the head separately I do not sew it on I actually knit it on but I omit a couple of rows off of the body and I omit a couple of rows off of the head and um, <clears throat> I come in, uh, I end the body at row 77 and I start the head at about row four. Now sometimes I'm, you might have, uh, in this case I think I'm gonna end up with one or two more stitches uh, on the let's see on the head at that point so I'll add a couple of stitches onto the body so the body count on the needle and the head count will match up on those two rows you just have to jimmy rig it a little bit no one will ever know and then I just continue knitting the head exactly as her instructions show and I'm gonna <clears throat> on the rest of this video I'm going to be talking about the intarsia here that we do at the face. Uh, some ha um, knitters haven't had the experience of doing the intarsia and uh, this little space may be a little bit tricky so I thought you know what I'm going to just tackle that and make a little video here as to how that goes together and hopefully it'll be helpful. So I'm gonna go back to my knitting uh, and I'll be coming back to this video in just a little bit. Okay, I wanna give you an update as to where I'm at, what progress I've made on my horse's head. Um, knitting it directly onto the body of the horse, so as we've said, there's no seam here. Uh, I am continuing to knit it in the round. I haven't started to leave an opening yet here in the back, but I, I will when I get to the part of the head where the muzzle is narrower. Uh, I'm knitting in, in tarsia, but I've made a couple of modifications. I decided not to use a second ball of yarn for the body. Uh, typically you would have a ball of yarn for this section. This is my opening in the back or the where the seam would be in the back and then you would have a body color a ball of yarn for this side and work them separately and just catching them on both sides of the white where the muzzle is. But since this is such a short distance here, um, I convinced myself that I could just carry the yarn back and forth. So that's what I'm doing. I keep testing to make sure that I'm leaving enough uh, looseness here on these threads that I'm bringing back and forth. So all I'm, all I'm achieving by that is just having only one ball of body yarn to work with and then one of course for the muzzle. So I'm going to go back to knitting a bit and then we'll um, finish off another portion of this video and I hope that's making sense to you. This is a little fiddly this horse's head. I don't care whether you were knitting in the round or in the straight it's just going to be a little more fiddly because you have several things going on but I think net net after it's all done it'll look great. So I hope you're having fun figuring all of that out and you know if you if yours isn't turning out the way you want it rip it out and start over again. I know often we're just afraid to do that, but we really learn how to make it happen when we, if we've had to do that a couple times. So don't be discouraged with that. And um, I think being able to do this in the round is, is uh, a good thing. So I'll get back to you. 
as I was so courageously saying, if you don't like how it's looking, don't be afraid to tear it out. Well, guess what? I took out the whole muzzle. I totally have thrown out the idea of knitting in the round and using one ball of yarn for the body. It was working for a little while, but once I got up very far, what I was finding was keeping my tension correct on the, um, where the intarsia, where the color change is, I wasn't able to keep the right tension on these stitches. So I have totally thrown out the idea of knitting this head in the round and doing it exactly as the pattern calls for. There's sometimes that trying to invent a new wheel just isn't the right thing to do. But I did knit in the round up to the intarsia, up to where the color change is. And then I went to knitting it exactly like the pattern called for. And so I went ahead and finished the head. Don't have the eyes on yet, but I do have the mane, got the tail on down here. Uh, so, you know, I've, I've made some progress, but um, sometimes the proven way to do it is exactly like the pattern says and not be too proud to say, you know what, that is the best way to do it. So I'm going along with the way the pattern is written, uh, using two balls of yarn for the body, just like you're supposed to while knitting for knitting the intarsia. So I did have a little seam back here, which of course is sewn up, and actually it's pretty well covered up with the mane. So all of that worked out well, but I had to try it, and I found out that just wasn't the best method. But what I do want to uh, talk to you about, which hopefully will be helpful, because some of the questions that I'm getting is about the intarsia and then these little make one left and make one right. I think that uh, that's where maybe some of us have not had a lot of experience and maybe I can give some hints on what to do to um, how, how to make it work, how to make intarsia, the stitches right here, be nice and close together, not get a gap, how to wrap it, how you wrap your yarn back here. It's really not wrapping, it's how you lay the, the strand of yarn that you're using. So I'm gonna demonstrate that a little bit. And then I'm gonna also demonstrate what I do to make that left increase and right increase. And I've got myself some little cheat notes here that I discovered was most helpful for me in the process. I'm going to get to that in a minute. But right now I want to give a little bit of a demonstration uh, on the intarsia. I know there's a lot of YouTubes out there that also are very, very good. But one little thing that I learned to uh, help get the tension correct, that was because you don't want to get these stitches too big right through here where your color change is. That's easy to not get your tension correct there. And so I thought, well, I'm just gonna do that as part of the demonstration and then talk about the increases a little bit more. So as you see here, I have three balls of yarn. I have an orange, I have a white for the muzzle, what would be the muzzle, and then the pink over here. And so I'm, um, if, if we were, for instance, on row of the horse's head, row 15, that's the first row that you do the color change. And I don't have the exact number of stitches on here, but um, I'm just gonna kind of walk us through this part of the demonstration. So it's knit up to where the color change is. And I never seem to do this quite as fluid as when I'm not on camera. I don't know why that is. Well, I guess I do know why it is because I'm having to hold my hands out here in front of me further and make sure that I stay within the camera view. And sometimes I've 
just not done that very well. But um, I'll, I'll try real hard here to stay in the camera. So now I've knitted right up to where we change over to the next color. And this is really quite simple. Here's my body color that I was working with. All you want to do is just lay that right straight up against your needle. If we look at the back side, here's that, that pink yarn. Now I'm going to pick up the white. And if you notice, looking close here, my white is, the pink I should say, is between the white yarn and my needle. And the, we want it right in that little groove there. The reason why is when we do this next stitch, now the white, that pink is caught in that stitch right there. There's the pink. And one thing that I've learned that is helpful is when you've got that stitch made, give a little tug on your white, give a little tug on the pink just to take any extra um, looseness that you might have. And it's very easy to get looseness in these two stitches right here. So giving that a little extra tug, not, not distort it, not pull it so hard that you're, you know, making it look different than the rest of the stitches on the needle. But you do want to take out the extra um, uh, looseness that you get in there by when you change yarns. So now we're going to pick up the white yarn knit over to the orange. Do that as quick as I can here. And once again, here we are at the color change. So I'm going to take my white yarn. I'm just going to lay it out nice and straight. Just lay it right there up against the back side of the needle. Pick up my orange and make my little stitch, well, easier said than done, I guess. Okay, there I've made the stitch. The white is caught into the back side of that stitch. And this is where I uh, just wanna take the extra, because you get a little extra right in here. Yarn, you can like, use your lose your tension. And so this is where I just give that white a little a little tug, make sure I've taken the extra out of the orange, and continue on knitting. We'll go across here, because I want to come back to that spot from the pearl side. And when we get over here, uh, you'll see how then, our, when we change over to the white, how we want to make sure we still haven't gained any extra looseness in those two stitches. So I might give it another little tug if you've, because uh, it can kind of get stretched out there when you're changing colors. And that was just the one thing that I noticed on the horse's muzzle that I had to be very mindful of in order to get those stitches to look right. So we have several things happening though with the muzzle. We're not only changing from one color to another, we are doing an increase. So there's several things to think about at the same time. So here's my last orange stitch. Now I have my yarn in front of me. I knit continental style. So this is where if we just started knitting now with this white yarn, we've got looseness here in the orange and we just wanna stop, take a moment, pull that, tug on that, get the extra. Because if you just keep on knitting, like this yarn kinda of wants to stick together, it has just a little bit of a fuzziness to it and it won't automatically just pull up the tension correctly. I find with this yarn, I'm having to be, like I say, mindful to make sure that I've got the extra tension so these all look, all look the same. So then, 
we just simply go back across to the to the white or through the white over to the pink I should say and here we're ready for that color change again and not to be frustrated with our yarns when they get too twisted I just stop lay everything down and get my balls separated again and it's just part of what you do when you're working with a small item like this and with intarsia there's just a point that you have to kind of be patient with it so here you can see I have looseness in my white yarn so this is where that little tug comes in make sure I've got tension there and then I'm going to continue on and just do one last double check to give that a little tug to keep it all even. This is where you do not want to be in a hurry. You want to take your time with what you're doing. Uh, otherwise, you'll not be happy with the intarsia and how the muzzle looks. Now we're going to go back and I'm going to talk about doing an increase and the importance of not only keeping your tension even through here, but now we have to stop and think, is it a right increase or a left increase? And we have to make sure that we're picking up the right part of um, between the stitches to do the increase on. So I said a little earlier uh, in the video that um, I think if you make the horse's muzzle, you, if you get that down, the rest of the heads are going to be uh, pretty easy because that has the most going on at the increase of the muzzle because of the color change. So I'm going to knit back over again here to the color change. Glad I didn't cast on any more stitches than I did for this demonstration. I could have actually used a fewer, I guess, but for demonstration purposes, I wanted to have a piece that was <clears throat> laying a little more flat than just the muzzle of the horse to work with. Okay, so now we are going to pretend that we're at that, let's um Row, row 15 because we're on our 16 because we're on the knit side and it is that knit uh, one make one R is what I want to talk to us about the M make one right and what how do we really do that so and remembering okay is this the side that I make one right or is it the make one left and so what I had to do because my my I'd lose concentration and especially if somebody's wanting to talk to you while you're knitting or you're watching TV and so I wrote out on a little piece of paper this is the make one right I actually wrote the description of it as to whether I says knit into front of loop or the bar and on this one which is make one left um, actually wrote it out again and then knit into the back of the loop or the bar and um, I think she refers to it oh look at that I just pulled my needle out fortunately this this yarn doesn't go anywhere very fast when you pull your needle out pick those up real quick like okay so make one right first of all we have to find the part i'm going to move my book here because now it's in my way so we have to find the part of the stitch that we're actually going to make one and it's the bar between the stitches get my little tool that I brought over here might help us. So this is the bar between the stitches. Actually, and because this is where I added new yarn, it's, it is easy, it's not anchored anywhere. But that's the bar. If you pick up a leg on either side 
but you're not going to get this top sloping stitch that we need to have here on the muzzle. It's going to come out twisted and you're not going to be happy. So it is critical that we pick up the bar and not a leg of a stitch. Okay, so that's number one. Now we've got the leg picked up. It's here on my needle right here. Now we have a choice, not a choice, but we have to follow specifically. This is where follow that written pattern very, very carefully. So if we are making one right, I'm going to go back over to my note here so that you can follow along with me. You lift the bar and then you're going to knit into the front of, now we've made a loop out of it, call this a loop, we can call it a stitch, but it's that bar that we picked up. So we're going to knit into the front of it. Well, we have to get it over here on our left needle, okay, there it is, to work with. So here we have a, a, front, a front loop right here. This is the front, this is the back loop. So for the make one R, make one right, we are going to knit into the front of that loop. So I'm gonna bring my needle around, I'm gonna pick, <laughs> sure I am, I'm gonna pick that stitch up, always when the camera is running, right? Pick it up, and we're going to knit into that, okay? Well, look at how I just pulled that right off. I gotta tell you, it's really hard for me to knit with my fingers all the way out here. Okay, I knit it into the front and you can see that gives it a specific twist and as we increase, it will make that little rounded edge like you want at the, at the side of the muzzle. That's how you get that edge. So now we look at our work and we would to continue on in the white. But as you can see, I've got, all of this has kind of come apart. It's loosened up. This is where stop and take a tug on the pink, take a tug on the white, so we bring that back together. If you don't do that, and you just continue to knit along and you come back, you're gonna have gaps in here that you do not want and you will be very unhappy with your work. So you've got to take the time to snug that yarn up. Now we're gonna go over to the left side of the white here that we're working with. We're knitting over there. And here we are, so now we're ready to make an increase and we're ready to change colors. But we've got to um, make the increase with the white yarn before we go to actually knitting with the orange. But the bar that we pick up is going to be in the orange yarn here, or the body yarn. So there's the bar, picking it up, putting it on my needle, I'm going to snug that back down just a bit. And the reason why that particular stitch is so loose, it's where I added the, um, it's not anchored. My orange yarn isn't, isn't really anchored very well there yet. But anyhow, got the tension back. And this is the bar up there. And now we are make M1L. So now we're going to knit into the back of that loop. This was the front, this is the back, and we're going to knit into that back stitch, but with the orange. So what do we do with the white? We're gonna lay the white right there along the needle so that when we pick up the orange, we have now caught the white yarn. We will have caught it in the orange. So we're gonna knit that stitch and get our tension again back to where it should be, giving all of that a little tug. And now we've made one in the orange, but I meant to make it in the white. So I'm gonna pull that out. 
do as I say, not as I do. So that causes us, since I'm knitting with the white, if I just start knitting with the white, we could have a bit of a gap there, right? So you wanna make sure you tug that orange yarn up. And we're going to uh, continue to knit across. Yeah. But in the orange now. Because I made our increase in the white stitch as we were supposed to, knitting into the back of that loop, and then we knit across. Okay, so I've, I'm have i here at the purl side, I've purled over, and I'm ready to do the increase right here between these two color changes. So for me, I'm thinking, you know, I just, I just got this figured out on the knit side, now I gotta try to figure it out on the purl side. So I found a little cheat. I turn my work around so the knit side's facing me. I want to do an increase. So I'm going to get my little handy dandy tool right here and I'm going to pick up the bar. Now make sure you get the bar and not one of the legs of a knitted stitch. Here's the bar. Slip it onto my left needle and I know that a left increase, look at my little cheat sheet right here, is knit into the back loop. So I'm going into the back loop and I'm going to knit it. There it is. And now I need to finish this row. I actually could sit here and knit backwards the whole way or turn my work back around Make sure I've got all my stitches snugged up. That stitch that I just did the increase with, I'm putting over onto my right needle. And now I'm going to purl across that row like I'm supposed to till I get back over here, knitting that last white stitch before I change colors and I have to do an increase here. So I'm gonna switch it back over now to my knit side and I'm going to pick up the bar, which is right here, lift it up onto and put it on my left hand needle. And this is a knit into the front of the bar or the loop, whatever you want to call it. So this is the front of the stitch. That's what I'm going to knit into. So we'll get that on this needle. There it is. I'm going to knit it pull it through. Technically this is a purl stitch but I'm doing it from the front side so it's really a knit stitch. <laughs> kind of crazy isn't it? So there's the increase. It's on my left, left needle where it needs to be. So now I, I'm going to finish purling that row or I could have knitted backwards. Purling back is a little faster. So go back to my purl side and purl that stitch. Make sure my tension is tugged up there on the white yarn and continue to purl across. And you hear my puppy dog barking. One of these days I might bring, that's Roy. He's four months old. Oh my goodness, we're going through the whole potty training thing here at this household. I'd forgotten how much work a little puppy could be, but he's a great little dog. So now 
here is the beginning and it, it looks a little odd at this point in time because when we do the next increase it'll you'll start seeing how this starts building this uh, little kind of we have an outer almost looks like a little cable going up there well it's not actually a cable but I have found that uh, turning my work over and doing those increases from the front side is just a lot easier way than trying to figure out okay that loop that bar that I'm going to pick up which leg is it or which side of that loop is it that I am actually going to knit into or purl into so that's my little trick with doing the increases with intarsia I just made it a lot easier wouldn't have to do that um, well you could do it even if you weren't doing intarsia but uh, if we do more rows, like I say, then you would start seeing it would, uh, with the increase, you'd start building that little cable. The whole secret is you have to read the pattern and start following it line by line to make that muzzle turn out correctly and getting your tension consistent to uh, make those stitches roll up around that increase like they're supposed to. So I hope that little trick that helps me helps you. Uh, I suspect when her new book comes out with some of these new wild animals that she's doing that we might find ourselves doing a bit more of this kind of uh, increases with the intarsia maybe on some of those little wild animals where there's maybe more more color change I, I could be wrong but I'm I won't I won't be surprised so um, don't get discouraged you know sometimes if it doesn't work we back up and punt <laughs> and that's what I did with the horse I'm glad I tried it I needed to figure that out uh, if knitting completely in the round on this head would work because of the intarsia it doesn't and so um, there's no shame in that. It's just sometimes we can't, we don't have a better way. We just have to go with what's been proven to work. So that's, um, I hope that's been helpful for you. I've appreciated some of your comments, uh, questions, and uh, we're just kind of working our way through some of these techniques. And I need to get some little eyes on this guy and a couple of little nostrils for him and uh, I think actually I'm going to make a little girl, little filly out of her. So thanks for watching and um, happy knitting. We'll see you next time.